So guys, uh, if you remember, uh, we did lot of topics on uh, ASA. Uh, I think you guys have attended, some have not attended, I don't know. But I was continuously giving lectures on ASA. And I finished the topics on ASA, like what are, what are the basic commands on ASA? Then I gave you how to, I showed you how to create the policy. That is the rule, allow TCP traffic, ICMP traffic, or uh, UDP traffic. Then I showed you example of object grouping, why we do object grouping, redundant interface, VLANs, NAT, Ether channel. DHCP server, DHCP relay agent, failover. Okay. We did port security practical on switches. Okay. We did time range. Now, uh, ASA also support uh, routing protocol. Okay. So, You can also do routing protocols. But today we will take one different topic. Okay. And I won't be starting VPN today because uh, it's already late today. So we'll do VPN tomorrow at 5 p.m. We'll start with VPN. Okay. VPN theory will be the first. So now in this, uh, let me share my uh, screen. Can you see the screen, all of you? Am I audible? And my screen is clear, no? Can you see the screen? Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So in this topology, see, we are going, we are, we are doing a topic called uh, Routing protocol authentication. Now, this is also part of your study or your topic. This is the, in fact, I gave you the book, uh, score uh, guide. Okay. So, securing routing protocol is important because what happened? You no, know, I have seen like uh, many times if two common people or two from same country or same state or same language meet any anyway suppose you're traveling in a public transport like train or bus or flight and uh, a communication start between two people you know, unknown people intruders or you can say you know you don't know this guy but still Something happened you know, related to some luggage. He helped you in the luggage in the flight, or he helped you in the carrying the luggage in the train. Or he helped you to give you some water bottle. So, for some reason, so we are social animal. It's already said we are a social animal. We always, you know, we can't stay alone. So. We start conversation and when we start conversation, we try to communicate and you know, we have a common protocol among us. Either we both are speaking English or in some other regional language. Say I might speak in Marathi or Hindi or Gujarati or French. Okay. Any language, you know. This guy understand. I we become very comfortable with that. I, know, I also know that language. He also know the language. And I am very comfortable of, with that. And then we start exchanging information. What are the information we start exchanging? Like what's your name? What is your profession? Okay, Dani, I will help you out in uh, solving the EVNG process. I will show you. 
Okay. We can discuss what is the issue. Sorry. Uh, Ramzan is going on, so some there's some sleep issues. And the lecture I'm yawning. So let me tell you. Uh, we are talking about, you know, I'm just giving an example that two two intruders or two unknown uh, identity communicating with each other and exchanging information. Now, sometimes it's okay, like, you know, the, in exchanging the information, like what's your name, what's your profession, what's your, where you stay, what you do, why you're going, where you're going, who is in your family, Okay. The conversation exchange is okay. Like you know, it's a common, healthy practice because you are traveling, so there is a healthy conversation, and you are exchanging a lot of information. But then, it can be an issue. It can be, uh, can be a threat. It can be a vulnerability. It can be a social engineering attack where. Somebody is trying to extract the information from you. So some people, they never, dis, you know, some people are sh shy nature. They, they'll they talk to you, they'll say hello. But then if you ask them, what is your name or what is your profession or what is your, uh, some might also ask you, what is your income? So never know. So some people, they avoid answering those questions. They don't want because they don't trust you. Definitely, it's an unknown person asking you something like that. But literally, I have seen like, you know, if I am traveling and somebody asks me, I won't shy because I feel bad. Like, and if I am not answering, I'm making myself rude. You know, sometimes people always say, you know, that, you know, I don't want to be rude. I want to be friendly. I'm a person. I'm a friendly person. I always... So how it is possible to become a, friend, a friendly person with the, the person who is not known to you, that whatever he questions, you answer him. And you answer him uh, with truth. Like, you know, you're not hiding something. So if he's asking your name, you can't say, I am XYZ. It happened. One guy, I remember, when I asked him, what is his name? He gave me some name. But when the ticket collector came and asked his name, he said some different name. So I understood that he was hiding his name. He was hiding hiding his identity. He don't wanted to speak to me. He and after he came to know that you know, uh, like he was giving me a wrong name. He was you know, he was in an embarrassing situation and he stopped talking to me. I can understand that you know. It's his own wish that he don't want to declare everything. But when it comes to network, when it comes to routers, when it comes to routing protocols, now you must be knowing it that routers are just a device or device, L3 device. But actually, it is the routing protocols which carries the network from one, one end to another end. It is the routing protocol. So you have studied in CCNA who is called it, you know, who is supposed to be routing protocol and who is supposed to be routed protocol. So IPv4, IPv6 are routed protocols. EIGRP, RIP version 2, EIGRP, OSPF, they are all routing protocols. Again, BGP is border gateway protocol, or you can say E. EGP, Exterior Gateway Protocol. And all those RIP, version 2, EIGRP, and OSPF is termed as IGP, Interior Gateway Protocol. So by default, network devices send routing information to and from their routing peers. I'm talking about two devices connected with each other, either directly or through some WAN media. Okay. So they always exchange this information. Because see, routing, the term routing means exchanging information. The term routing means exchanging the networks. The term routing means promising. Okay, this is my network. I'm giving it to you. Come on, you also give me your networks. So routing is that only. You know, routing means exchanging of network. Routing means making two different networks communicate with each other. 
routing means promising okay these are my networks anytime if you have a requirement if you have a packet for this network send it to me so when it comes to routing and when it comes to exchanging information both the routers immediately exchange once they once you configure with a common routing protocol either rip or j2 or you configure eigrp or you configure ospf why because eigrp rip or j2 ospf they all work on a common multicast address on a multicast address they have their own multicast address like 224009 belongs to rip or j2 uh, ospf is 110 or ospf sorry uh, 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 what do you say? Uh, five and six, like that. So, 224 multicast address scheme. Okay. This is like for RIP, it's different. For EIGRP, it is 10. For RIP, it is 9, suppose. For OSPF, it is five and six, like that. These are all multicast address mapped to this protocol. So, when they communicate, when they send hello, like if I'm sending hello to you, you know, I remember when I joined the session, somebody immediately said, good evening. Then I responded, good evening. I said, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And you guys also did. Because you understand my language. So when, when two devices, when they are connected devices, when they have some kind of fan connectivity and they are reachable with each other, and when you run any routing protocol, this routing protocol send hello messages and the other guy responds to those hello messages and then they start become neighbor first and maintain neighbor table. Then they start maintaining the topology database. Then they start doing routing table. So maintaining a neighbor table, then topology table, then routing table is the general behavior of EIGRP and OS. No doubt, rip for gen to don't do all these things. He always just maintain routing table. But at least EIGRP and OSPF are considered as the best routing protocol with good ADs also, administrative distance. Like rip for gen to carries an administrative distance of 120. EIGRP carries 90. For uh, OSPF, it is 110. So these routing protocol always do neighborship first, then they make topology table and then they form routing table. So here the question, we are not learning routing protocol. We are learning that what exactly happens in a basic, at a basic level. How these protocols behave? What is the meaning of routing? So they are also following that same term routing. And when you run routing protocol, they do what? They start exchanging these information. They start exchanging the networks. Or you can say routing information. Now, this routing information can be like, so just now I told you about a, a, an example. Hello? Guys, please mute yourself. Hello? Okay. So when it comes to... I just now I told you an example where I told you in a train, two people are exchanging information. This is okay, good, friendly nature. You are not rude. You are not having an attitude. You are down to earth. And you start making friend in your train, in the train journey. And if really it works fine, you will be like enjoying the whole journey. Because many times you, you don't know in India when we travel by train, we travel for 36 hours. 24 hours, 36 hours. So if you're traveling 24 hours together and doing nothing, just sitting on the seat or either sleeping or listening to music or watching movie on mobile, you can also be friendly with the, the guys around you or the family around you. They, You won't believe, last time when I was traveling, they they even exchange food to you. Good, del, you know, delicious food. Because you're you are a single person, you are hungry and you don't have a choice to buy just a bad food that is being carried by the train people. Or you can just be friendly with the family who have already carried a lot of food. 
parathas, rice, everything. So you won't believe when I was friendly with this family, they offered me good paratha, they offered me tea. But in short, all those are all friendly gestures and you won't believe I took all those food because I was also hungry and I found this as a safe food because the family was good. But there are cases where you've taken a food from someone and you have gone for a long sleep and you are unconscious for 24 hours. You're being hospitalized for having some drug in that food and you lost all your packages. You lost all your valuables, gold ornaments. You lost all your mobile phones just because you ate some sweet or some food from an unknown person or unknown family. So here, when it comes to security, you don't trust others. So you see, when we offer some food to intruders and if they have heard about these stories, sad stories or some kind of dangerous stories that they, people are being killed with this food, poisoned, just to rob them. You become cautious and you start avoiding this kind of thing. So when it comes to routing protocol, initially they started like that, that, okay, two routers connected with each other, reachable. If you run any routing protocol like EHGRP or OSP for free poison 2, they will communicate. I, you won't believe 15 years back, 18 years back, you know, this was the scene. I used to teach like that. But then later on, they came out with some innovation. They said, no, security point of view, this is not good. Because any router comes in and tells me, okay, I'm also running EHRP. Come on, give me your networks. I will also give my networks. How can I trust him? This router can be an attacker router. So if someone is standing on road and telling me, okay, come on, take this suite. I will not accept it because for security reasons, I won't accept it. This sweet or this food might contain some poisonous item. He might drug me and he might rob me. He might kill me also. I would never know. So I have to be cautious. So here in this explanation, I was trying to tell you that those two routers exchange the information you can provide some kind of authentication. Now, when it comes to authentication, always remember the term authentication means what? Somebody is asking you, who are you? When the term comes, authentication means somebody is asking you, who are you? And when somebody is asking you, who are you? You reply with the term username and password. To username, some kind of username being provided to you. So many times if you see you have some credentials, you have some Gmail IDs, you are being asked for your ID and your password, bank account. You are being asked for username and password and OTPs also nowadays. So you see this kind of you know, method of asking something like username is nothing but a term called authenticating or authentication. You can set up this whole process in everything, everything like banking sector. Banks have done all those stuff. They have made this a strong, this thing secure and strong that anybody who's trying to take out money from some ATM machine, he has to first insert the card and he has to give the pin. Then only will get money. Anyone who is doing uh, uh, online uh, banking and doing some transaction, he has to first provide the username and password to enter into the bank account. And whenever he is doing some transaction, again, one more authentication is he should have a transaction password. Second, Third, there will be kind of an OTP also, one-time password to confirm whether he is the right guy. Because, because see, this guy is using username password, that's okay. He's, this guy is using some kind of 
pin, this is okay. He is using some kind of OTP, then he is okay. Because all cannot be wrong. That is where strict warning is being spread. Na? That don't share your OTP with anyone. Okay. So you have two methods of maintaining authentication between these protocols. First one is a plain text method. Plain text method means here also you are being asked for username and password or some kind of key ID. And the second one is message digest file algorithm. The message digest file is nothing but hash algorithm. There is a difference between encryption algorithms and hash algorithms. Encryption algorithms are used for encrypting a password or hiding a password, maintain the confidentiality of the data. So in order to maintain the confidentiality of the data, we always use encryption, encrypting protocols or encryptions. There are a lot of protocols for encrypting or a lot of standards for doing that. Like we have data encryption standard, triple data encryption standard, advanced encryption standard in 128 bit, 192 bit, 256 bit like that. So yes, we have encryption algorithms and we have hash algorithms. Now you must be thinking what is the difference between encryption algorithms and hash algorithms? Encryption algorithms or encryption standards are being used to maintain the confidentiality of the data and hash algorithms are being used to maintain the integrity of the data. And again, data confidentiality is different, data integrity is different. Confidentiality of the data means nobody should read your data and integrity of the data means nobody should change your data, nobody should edit it. See, if I'm sending something to my friend, I want all the content of that letter whether it is a normal letter or love letter. So if I'm sending a love letter to my girlfriend or to anyone whom I love, I don't want the content to get changed. I want the content should remain as it is. Whatever I have mentioned with my pure heart or with my heart, the content has to be there in that letter. And if somebody changes that content or somebody reads that information, then my secrecy is gone. My confidentiality of data has gone. My integrity has gone. So when it comes to maintain the confidentiality of the data, we you always go for encryption algorithms. Just now I said, and when we go for uh, maintaining the data integrity, we go with hash algorithms and we have MD5 and SHA. It is not that SHA, S-H-A-H, it is SHA, secure hash algorithm. MD5 means message digest file. And you won't believe Encrypt things, a data which is encrypted can be decrypted, but data which is hashed cannot be brought into normal this thing. In CCNA, you must have done enable secret or you must have done service password encryption. What is that? When you do service password encryption, all your passwords get hashed. When you do enable secret, though there are two different uh, algorithms being, uh, two different protocol is being used. It's not same, enable secret and uh, service password encryption. But I'm just giving you an example that when you do enable secret Cisco and when you say show run, you won't see Cisco, you will see some junk characters, some special characters or some alpha numerics and special character mixture is there. That means, that information is being hashed and you won't believe you cannot bring it back. If you say no, enable secret, secret, then the password will get removed. But you won't get that information. What was the password? When you say service password encryption, all your plain text password will get hidden. But you can't bring it back. So when it comes to hash algorithms, they are designed in such a way that they take out a hash value of your information or your data and they always send the hash value. They don't send the actual content. That is why you see the name signifies something, no? message digest file. 
Like for example, if I'm eating a banana now, or if I'm eating any food, what do you think? Can I back? Can I bring that food back again in a normal? This thing not possible. It will turn into some junk. You know that. You cannot bring that food back. It will go into some junk. So same way, when it comes to message digest file, when it comes to hash algorithm, it digests the message and comes out with some different output. And it is 100% more secure than clear text or plain text. This is the beauty of MD5. When it comes to message digest file, hash algorithm, it is more secure compared to plain text or clear text password. Because the, because the hacker cannot see the password. He cannot temper it. But then he's telling MD5 authentication is still susceptible or you can say vulnerable. Susceptible means vulnerable, prone to. Brute force and dictionary attack. Now, brute force and dictionary attack means somebody is trying to crack those passwords. So, if you have designed a weak password anywhere, even in your Gmail account or bank account, some people they always keep some names, either country name, pet name, mother's name, wife name, girlfriend name. These names can be easily cracked. Because everyone knows, okay, who is this guy? So this guy is Munawar Khan. Okay, what is his wife's name? Let's try that name. What is his girlfriend name? Let's try the name. Or what is his kid's name? People always, a family person won't keep it, uh, you know, always go with their kid's name. So let's try what is his kid's name. They'll always try to crack this way. So that is why it is being always said that don't use your family names. Don't use your personal name in the password. Don't use your wife's name or girlfriend name or kid's name in the password. Use some different names. Try to use some special characters like underscore, exclamation, dollar, at the rate, hash. Try to use space in between. Now these alphanumeric, these um, special characters or combination of alphanumeric and special character title case like always the first letter of the password should be in capital other letter should be in small always use one special character use number in your password all these com don't use less than four character password or four things go for more than eight or six between six to eight all these are suggestions so that the hackers might not crack your password with the help of this, that is brute force and dictionary attack. They might try to use those combinations. So this is a recommendation that though these algorithms are good, but still you always go with what? Some kind of special characters. So we'll see what is the you know, what is actually what is the meaning of authentication. And now you see lot of this is a old slide, lot of route, all in fact all the routing protocols support uh, thing authentication. So in EIGRP we have two types of password. One is simple password and one is MD5 authentication. Simple password authentication, router send packet and key. One router, like R1 router is connected to R2. If you see the diagram, R1 is connected to R2, R1 is connected to R3, and R2 is connected to R1 and R4. So any direct connections between R1 and R2 and R1 and R3 or R4, they can, because the authentication can be done between interfaces don't have to do it between routers. So I can do authentication between R1 and R2. It is not necessary that I have to do it between all the routers I have connected. I can do only authentication between R1 and R2. Possible. Possible. 
it is not mandatory that R1 has to do authentication with, but see, you are asking me one thing that, okay, uh, you, you, you told me that I should not take any food from people who are traveling in the train because they are not, you cannot trust them. They might drug you, they might poison you just for you know, doing the robbery. They might steal you. What do you say about flight? Should I trust people who are in flight? Because in flight, they cannot run away. No? Stealing everything and they can't run away. So what do you think? Should I take something from the person next to you sitting in the flight? Or you say, no, don't take it. So see, it depends. But then security is security. Man. And let it be a flight, let it be train, let it be bus, anywhere, anywhere, sitting in a somebody's office, there also you might get cheated. You never know. Anywhere on the road, anywhere in, you know, you're sitting in the office, somebody even will come and cheat you. Okay. Uh, there was one um, incident that I was sitting in the office long time back, you know, when I was uh, I just finished my college and I was I started attending some uh, some of my relatives' office. I was just sitting in the front desk, and that relative told me that I'll be out for two hours. Can you please manage it? Like, you know, can you handle it? I said, okay, no problem. So I used to go every day and sit there, and he used to be out for two three hours. He used to come late. So one day one person came to me and he said uh, he told me the company name, he told me the name of the owner. So, okay. So, and so person. So, I said, yes, he's the boss. He's now, he's gone out. What happened? So, he said, boss, your, your, you know, your relative or whoever, this person, Mr. X, he told me to make one notice board. You have a um, advertising board, no, where you have uh, your company name in capital letters or something like that with address and all. So I said possible that this fellow might have given an order to make a notice board. So he said the, the, the person here in this office has given me the boss order for two to three notice okay, to put it outside the office in the building and it is ready. So can you Take the delivery. Can you pick up? So I said, okay, no problem. Give the delivery. Give the delivery. I'm here. You give the delivery. You bring the board. So he said, no, no, sorry. Actually, I can't bring the board here. I have to put that board on the building. And for that reason, I have to buy brackets. To put that bracket. Steel brackets. Or iron bracket. Whatever. He said to me. And I have to purchase that. And for purchasing those iron bra brackets, I need money. So I said, sorry, because I'm a new person here. And the person who holds this office and my relative, he is out. So I said, call him, no, just now. And then I started calling him and I was not able to reach this fellow. So I thought, let's do this favor for that relative. So I said, okay, what will be the cost? He said, cause it will be hardly 1,000 rupees. Two, four brackets I have to buy. 250 each, so 1,000 rupees. So I said, okay, I, I can't trust you. I can't give you money. Come on, let's go. But then I thought, if I'm going with you, who's going to take care of the office? So I just called the office boy. Said, boss, take this money. 1000 rupees, go with this person and let him purchase the bracket. You give the money to the shopkeeper, take the bill and come back to me and let him buy the bracket and let him come with you buying the bracket. You both of you come here. So I'm giving my money in the safe hands because I know the office boy, but I don't know the person. So they went. In those days, we were not having mobile phones, so the landline. So it was almost 30 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, and I got a call from my office boy. He said, sir, this guy, you know, what type of bracket he needs, it is not there in the hardware shop. So I said, go to the next hardware shop. He said, no, this guy is telling me, you give me money, I will buy it. And I will bring it to your office in half an hour. 
you go. So I said, don't do that. So he said, just you know, before I said, don't do that. He just handed the phone to my uh, to that that person, that intruder, or that person, new person who was who told me that uh, boards are ready. And then he said, yes, yes, sir, I will do that. I will uh, I will manage it. Don't worry. So I said, you both of you come back, and we'll see it later on. Don't don't they say he said yes, yes, no problem, no problem. And then what he what uh, my office boy came alone. And then I asked him, where is the money? He said, you only told, no, because this guy told me, yes, 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 means what? Your uh, boss told me to give the money to me and then you go to office. So I said, no, man, I said, you both of you come back to office and don't give him money. So I said, no. He said, like that. So I gave him money. You wouldn't believe it was a scam. Next day when the, uh, the same day when the owner came, he said, boss, I never gave such order to anyone about notice board. You could have asked me before giving him money. So I thought, no, I should do one favor. I will get my money back when you come back. So he said, you could have asked me, confirm me that whether you have given orders for the notice board or not. You won't believe this was just a small, you know, see how misunderstanding took place and how this fellow ran away with 1,000 bucks without giving me a board without giving me bracket. Nothing was there. He just bluffed. He just fooled me. He just gave me a story about this order and this bracket and all. So overall in this example, I want to tell you that I got fooled for 1000 rupees and from that day onwards, I definitely I was not getting fooled, but then that office boy also you know, misunderstood what I am trying to tell. He handed over the phone. So <clears throat> So next time when I was giving some money to someone, like, you know, my friend asked me 10,000 rupees. So I told my cousin brother to go and give him 10,000. So that time I was very cautious. So I told my cousin brother that you don't know my friend, right? And you're handing over 10,000 rupees to him. So one thing, tell that friend to call from his own mobile phone to me and confirm that you are here. So my cousin went there, told my friend, okay, you are Mr. XYZ? He said, yes. Come on, call my cousin, Hunawar Khan, on this number and talk to him. So he called me, said, boss, just now your cousin has arrived with the money. So you better confirm or you confirm him that I am the right person. So I identified my friend. Okay, then he handed over the phone to my cousin. And my cousin said, should I hand over the money now? You recognize your friend? I said, yes. And then he handed over the money to my friend and the, and the deal was done. So this is how I was not playing safe because I don't want any misunderstanding because if somebody comes and say, okay, I am the person, you have to hand it over me 10,000 rupees and this guy gives him without knowing, who will come to know? So first I have to find out the identity of my friend. I have to find out. So he said, oh man, I'm so and so. You know me. You are my friend. I said, yes, I know you, man. I recognize you. Nowadays, we do video call. You won't believe. The security always give a video call <laughs> to your home. And they will ask, this fellow has come, Mr. Vijay. He's telling he's your relative. Please confirm whether we should send him on the uh, your floor or in your building, in your wing. Or should we kick him out? Because he's telling he's your relative. So please confirm. So they will show you this fellow's face in the video. And then you have to confirm, okay, ha, this is my relative, this is my cousin. If you don't recognize him, you should say, no, we don't know him. So anytime, I you know, anybody comes in my building from Swiggy or Zomato or some, you know, the security is having an app. So they immediately give a call. And they will tell that Mr. Prakash from Swiggy has come to deliver some item. You have done this order. I have to find out. Okay. So I will ask my family. You ordered? They say yes. And then I will permit. And then he will send him to my flat. Otherwise, he will never allow these unknown people to enter into the premises. Whether they tell that I have come to visit so-and-so person also, they will know. 
never allowed. In my college days, I used to do research work. So whenever I used to go to the entry gate in some premises, they used to ask me, who are you? So I said, so-and-so person. From where you have come? From so-and-so research company. They say, sorry, you are not supposed to come in. We are not allowing these people. Then I told my senior, what is this? When nobody is allowing me to go inside the building. What to do? So my senior told me, boss, you do one thing. You tell, I want to win Mr. Shah. Because these people are very rich guys. And they will be there. There will be only at least one Shah in the building. So he will at least allow you. So I said, Mr. Shah ko milna hai. Or I want to meet Mr. Shah. So he'll say, okay, go. Because there is at least one Mr. Shah in this premises or in this building. There might be five buildings or three buildings or three wings. Mr. Shah will be there. So people dealing in diamonds or people dealing in uh, share market. So, okay. I got entry and then I can go anywhere. But now the days have changed. This is years back. Now people, if I say, I want to meet Mr. Shah, he will ask me which wing, which flat, which floor. And then he will give a video call to Mr. Shah. And then say, if this fellow has come to meet you. You know him? This Shah will say, no, I don't know him. He will kick me out. So those tricks are gone. now. Clear, guys? So here in this topology, I will be configuring either simple method or message digest five method. If I'm doing simple method, simple password method, Router send packet and key. Neighbor check where the key matches its key and the process and uh, connectivity takes place. But then this process is not secure because the key is going openly. Na? Like for example, if you are uh, if if your ATM machine says, "Welcome, Mr. Munawar Khan. Now enter your pin." And suppose. I know if I'm entering the pin and she's telling, okay, you have entered 7315. What is this? She's declaring, she's, you know, she's openly uh, telling to everyone. So somebody standing behind me or somebody is outside that ATM machine will hear my pin. So you see, when you write down the pin also, you'll see some asterisk, asterisk sign. Some asterisk. What is that? They don't want to show the pin to anyone. They don't want... Anyone should see the pin. That is why nowadays they cover the keypads also. So that when you press the pin, when you press the keys, it is not seen by anyone. Because people might put cameras. People might put some, you know, some cameras, hidden cameras would be there. And people might peep into some windows and see what you're typing. So you have to keep, hide your keypad. Or they have put a cover on the keypad. So when you press the ATM pin, you can't see. So simple password is not secure. Simple password, uh, neighbor checks, uh, and it is open. But MD5, yes. Configure a key and a key ID. See, you have a password also, you have a key ID. Router generates a message digest or hash of the key ID. See, it is not just the key which is being sent. It is the hash value that is being generated against the key. So configure a key and a key ID router generates a message digest or hash of the key and the key ID and the message is sent with packet. The key is not sent. The message digest is sent. See, message digest means when you eat something, the, the food get digested and something else comes out. So here, message is getting digested and that digested message is going being sent and the key is not being sent and process is definitely more secure and more better than simple password and the whole process of having authentication is also safe see previously we were not doing authentication now we are doing authentication we are trying to find out who is the other guy why he is asking me all these information you won't believe girls are standing in the mall. And when you go in the mall, you enter, girls are standing. They will immediately come to you. Beautiful girl come to you and say, Sir, lucky draw. So, then you are asking, what lucky draw? So, Sir, you fill this form uh, and then you give it to me and we will drop it in the box and after 10 days, you will come to know the result. 
whether you have won the lottery or not. So lucky draw will be there. Okay. Then what is the amount? She will say 1 lakh, 5 lakh, 10 lakh, whatever. Or some dollars. So you get attracted. So I used to do that initially. So I said, okay, come on, let me fill the form. So she will give me one form. Name, address, mobile number. Whether you own a car, you say no. Okay, whether you own motorbike, yes. Whether you own a car, yes, suppose. Then what is your per annum income? And they will say optional. Then you will say, okay, it is optional, I won't mention. But some people don't know. Why should I? I will write 12 lakhs per annum or 15 lakhs or 24 lakhs per annum. I would mention the amount. I am proud of having this salary. So I will mention See, all these details are being carried out and then she will drop in front of you in the drop box and says, thank you, sir. We will inform you. When they will inform, no call, nothing. Now, this information is being sold to 10,000 people by charging them. So she or the company who has put her on near the mall is earning a lot by you giving the information, you're not getting a single paise. And these companies are getting such a lot of money. They're giving this crucial information. You won't believe you, you are not just finish your shopping also and you'll get a, 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 a call from car loan. Why? Because you mentioned in the form bike. So they will think that you already have a bike now. So they will offer you car loan. How they came to know that you don't have a car? You only just now mentioned in the form, no? Bike. How they came to know that you are living in a rented apartment? They will immediately send a call for housing loan. And it was a joke, no? A few days back just now, I told you that I thought of purchasing uh, I thought of purchasing a table or a stool Okay, where I can stand up and do my cleaning of my house or table where I keep something, flower water. They started offering me rope and a fan. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> they thought I am doing suicide or what? <laughs> Why they are offering me a add of rope and a fan? <laughs> just because I am buying table, that doesn't mean I will be buying rope and a fan to just get, get myself hanged and do suicide. But then Google is Google, you know, you, they, they saw your search. Okay, he's searching table. Let let give him the quotation for ropes also and for fan also, ceiling fan, because this person might die. <laughs> Joke. But see, this happens when. So, security information or whatever information you're exchanging with anyone, it should not get leaked. And for that reason, we have simple password and MD5 authentication. This was not there previously. They later on they started with EIGRP, OSPF, which is everyone is uh, having this authentication. All the routing protocols, IGP or EGP, carries authentication scheme. Okay. So EIGRP support MD5 authentication. Router generates and check EIGRP packet. Router authenticate the source of each routing update packet that is received. Configure a key or password and key ID. Each participating neighbor must have the same key on. So if I'm configuring Cisco, if I'm configuring any key, the other fellow also should have the same key. Then only my authentication will be successful. So what we'll do? Uh, we'll do practical tomorrow because it's already late. And I will show you how this EIGRP and how this OSPF authentication take place, how to configure MD5, how to configure plain text authentication. Okay. So I hope you understood exactly what I mean to say, how why routing protocols carries authentication because you don't want router should start exchanging or routing protocol should start exchanging the information or the networks because this can lead to a lot of problem. Somebody might send some misleading networks into your uh, router and these networks might create a problem in your whole network. So you don't want this thing to happen. And for that reason, we always try to secure 
are routing protocol with authentication. And there are two types of authentication, plain text and MD5. And I explained you what is the advantage of having MD5 authentication over plain text. Because plain text is not safe, not secure. In MD5, it actually hashes the key. It actually hashes the password. And only the digested information is being sent, not the key. And there is also a key ID. Okay. So tomorrow, in the tomorrow session, the continuous session of uh, routing protocol authentication, I will show you practically how it works without authentication and with authentication, both plain text and MD. I hope this is clear with you guys. Okay. Any questions? Any questions you want to ask? Sharat, Dani, any question? Okay. So thank you very much, guys. Take care. Have a nice day. Meet you tomorrow. Bye.